Uh, I remember when my brother, ah, this is a tough one. Well, let's try to tiptoe around it because okay. this is the world we live in. Basically, he was kind of propositioned or something and he told my father, can that boy do anything where I've been like, oh no, you too? It makes me want to talk about just the representation of being a black man in Hollywood. In a past exclusive interview with actor Omar Gooding, the screen star delved into the often controversial topic of homosexual movie roles. Omar shared his thoughts and experiences on not playing gay characters in movies and TV shows throughout his career, and mildly suggested gatekeepers like Diddy have been on his neck all this while. As if you were in a, a homosexual man, do you think that would have altered your career? A bit. Oh, thousand percent. Throughout the interview, Omar shared his insights on the evolving landscape of LGBTQ plus representation in media and how it became more inclusive and authentic over time. He also addressed the criticism and backlash that sometimes come with him not portraying a gay character and how he navigates those challenges with respect and sensitivity. Because I'm the type of heterosexual man that will not compromise. In 2018, the actor reportedly went on a homophobic tirade directed towards a man who called him out for allegedly being rude to a restaurant employee who he claims was taking too long with his food. According to TMZ, the smart guy actor was caught on tape hurling anti-gay slurs at another patron at a food bar area of Rio in La Vegas. At around 3 a.m. in the video obtained by TMZ, Omar can be seen challenging the man, who claims to be a police officer, to arrest him. Throughout the exchange, the former child star dropped a series of F-bombs and the homophobic F-word slur twice. He also went on to call the man a retard while security arrived to address the issue. The site reported that Omar, the younger brother to well-known actor Cuba Gooding Jr., was waiting on a pizza he ordered and began verbally attacking the restaurant worker for taking too long with his order. All hell broke loose after the witness stepped in to urge the actor to calm down. Omar has since spoken with TMZ about the situation, explaining that it was late and his food was also late. Who wouldn't be a little impatient, he added. He didn't specify but did claim, by no means am I a hater or homophobic. My apologies for the offensive language, but that does not define who I am. We calmly communicated, worked it out, and all was forgiven. However, those close to the actor believe some people are out to destroy his family, including his star elder brother Cuba, who has been involved in some unwanted business with Diddy in the past. When it comes to Hollywood dynasties, the Gooding family is a force to be reckoned with. One member of this talented clan who has made a name for himself in the entertainment industry is obviously Omar. With a successful career spanning over three decades, Omar has captivated audiences with his versatile acting skills, charming personality, and undeniable talent. From his breakout role in the hit television show Hangin' with Mr. Cooper to his memorable performances in movies such as Baby Boy and Barbershop, Omar has left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. But there is so much more to this multi-talented star than meets the eye. From his early start in showbiz to his philanthropic efforts, Omar's charisma and talent have made him a beloved figure in Hollywood. His ability to connect with viewers ensures a lasting impact in the entertainment industry. The actor, who doubles up as a comedian, claims his career is now in line, just like they did to his elder brother, Cuba Gooding. Between the late 1990s and early 2000s, thousands, Cuba Gooding Jr. was one of the biggest names in Hollywood. Gooding, the son of singers Shirley Sullivan and Cuba Gooding Sr., was born to be an entertainer. He began as a breakdancer before pivoting to acting in the early 1980s. He made a splash with various television appearances on hit shows like Hill Street Blues and MacGyver before landing his first major film role playing Tree Styles in John Singleton's debut feature and pioneering classic Boys in the Hood. His career trajectory only went up after that, appearing in several other critically acclaimed features, such as the Rob Reiner adaptation of Aaron Sorkin's A Few Good Men and the pandemic thriller film Outbreak. However, the defining role of his career came when he played Rod Tidwell in Cameron Crowe's Jerry Maguire. 
The film was a box office success, and Cuba's performance was lauded by critics, landing him an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. His character's show me the money catchphrase became a pop culture staple, and his overzealous Oscar acceptance speech was a meme before memes were memes. It even helped get him memorialized on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2002. But despite multiple early triumphs, an array of personal and professional setbacks have caused the once revered actor to step out of the spotlight. Nowadays, Cuba makes headlines not for any recent films he's made, but rather for the string of controversies he's been surrounded by. And and now his younger brother is about to join him in that gray area. To get the elephant out of the room, the most obvious reason Cuba Gooding Jr. isn't being sought out for roles anymore is that numerous women have accused him of SUL misconduct. It started in June of 2019 when USA Today reported that Cuba was being investigated for allegedly groping a woman while drunk at a bar in New York City. The actor was later arrested after turning himself into the NYPD, as USA Today later confirmed. He was eventually released pending a further trial. In October of that same year, the New York Times reported that Cuba was indicted on a separate SUL abuse charge. Though details about the new allegations weren't released, they were serious enough that they delayed the trial for the June incident. The same New York Times report also noted that Cuba denied all allegations against him and that his lawyers had tried unsuccessfully to get the original charges dismissed. Some believe the trouble began earlier than 2019. Page Six reported that ever since Cuba's divorce from his high school sweetheart Sarah Kapfer in 2014, the actor has spent his free time clubbing, partying, and drinking heavily while displaying some of the questionable behavior detailed in the assault allegations. Diddy has broadly been mentioned as an influence on Cuba's unwinding change of behavior. Unfortunately, those first two allegations were only the beginning. Not long after the second woman made charges against Cuba, Page Six reported that three more women had come forward to accuse the actor of misconduct. The report stated that these new allegations dated back as far as 2008 and included instances of the actor groping two of the women in similar ways on separate occasions. By the end of 2019, NBC News reported that the number of women accusing Cuba of misconduct had grown to 22, which included an additional seven women coming forward with detailed stories that involved instances of forced kissing and Cuba giving graphic depictions of SEUL acts, among other inappropriate behaviors. The coming year proved to be even worse for Cuba, as CNN reported that the number of accusers had grown to a staggering 30 women by August 2020. The actor also officially got charged with three counts of forcible touching and three counts of SUL abuse. He still denies all wrongdoing. As of the time of the CNN report, his defense was working to undermine the credibility of the accusers by using their past statements against them and questioning the procedural propriety of the police investigation. In addition to the multiple criminal accusations, two more women filed civil suits against Cuba Gooding. In August 2020, the New York Times reported that a lawsuit was filed against the actor by a woman accusing him of R her twice in 2013. The lawsuit stated that the woman referred to as Jane Doe met Cuba at a Greenwich Village restaurant, and the actor invited her to have drinks with him at a hotel in Soho. Cuba eventually invited her to his hotel room. When the woman tried to leave, Cuba attacked her and R her. This followed a different lawsuit that was filed earlier in 2019 by one of the many women who accused the actor of groping. According to Page Six, bartender Natasha Ashworth was working at a nightclub when Cuba approached her. After denying his advances, the award-winning actor then proceeded to grope her B several times. Unlike the 2020 suit, the same Page Six report noted that the events that transpired within the 2019 lawsuit happened a year prior. In June 2021, Complex reported that Ashworth won her lawsuit in a default judgment, basically meaning that Cuba simply failed to respond to the lawsuit at all. As you would expect, these allegations affected the actor's output when it comes to work. But even before all the SUL misconduct allegations against him were revealed, Cuba's career wasn't what it used to be. After the success of Jerry Maguire, the actor suffered the same career slump that has plagued many actors and actresses after they won the Golden Statuette. Despite starring in films like the well-received As Good As It Gets and the box office hit Pearl Harbor, his post-Oscar resume is plagued by a series of terrible comedies that have landed him several Golden Raspberry Award nominations. Some of his more questionable career decisions included the R-rated romantic comedy Boat Trip, 
poorly reviewed and little seen Disney comedies, Snow Dogs and Home on the Range, the much reviled family sequel, Daddy Day Camp, and the Eddie Murphy misfire, Norbit. Even with films like the Ridley Scott crime drama, American Gangster, in between these mistakes, it was clear that the days of critically acclaimed films like Jerry Maguire were long past Cuba. He has even acknowledged in an interview with Page Six that he made several bad decisions for his career, including revealing that he turned down roles in several acclaimed films like Amistad, Ray, The Last King of Scotland, and Hotel Rwanda, all of which went on to be nominated for several Academy Awards. When asked why he made so many poor career choices, Cuba denied that he was motivated by money. For me, it was always about protecting the sanctity of that golden statue, because I felt I needed to show people that I can do more. I can do better. We're not sure how appearing in a movie that one critic described as racially insensitive, politically incorrect, and beyond crude, protects the sanctity of, well, anything, but the actor didn't elaborate. Not only were many of the previously mentioned films critical flops, but a good number of them were massive box office misfires as well. Every actor has their fair share of flops, but Cuba's post-Oscar resume is filled with them, thus his brother's assertion that someone powerful is trying to ruin their family. As Cuba himself has said, I was in the wilderness of Hollywood for almost 10 years. I was off the studio lists. I wasn't getting the roles offered to actors that hadn't done a third of the roles I had done or had the popularity I had. While films like Norbit and Snow Dogs performed decently during their theatrical runs, the same can't be said for many of the others. Boat Trip only made $15 million against a $20 million budget, and Home on the Range was one of the biggest financial disasters ever for Disney. Though not a box office failure, the $18 million haul of Daddy Day Camp isn't anything to write home about and is a far cry from the $160 million haul that the original Eddie Murphy starring Daddy Day Care made during its original run in 2003. Other box office disappointments featuring Cuba include the musical comedy The Fighting Temptations, which made $32 million against a $30 million budget, the buddy comedy Chill Factor, which made $11 million against a $34 million budget, and the psychological thriller Instinct, which sadly made $34 million against an enormous $80 million budget. These films essentially turn Cuba's name into box office poison. So, in your opinion, do you think Omar is right in claiming Diddy has a hand in ruining his family's fortune? Let us know in the comment section below. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.